A quick update. I haven't updated because I wanted things to look a little bit nice. I'm calling this boat Osprey, a suggestion from a friend because it's intended for fishing. In case you didn't know some of the special features, it has a lap construction. Here you see one lap. And under the hull, it has another, which is the transition into the tunnel. And that lap works out as a very nice uh, step design. And you see the nice angle. There's about a five inch overlap. And here it doesn't affect anything because this side is tapered down to this point and with a little puddle of epoxy mix, uh, the water will drain to the stern and actually made construction much easier um, and I think stronger as well because this uh, three quarter inch area at five inches, you see here I haven't, I haven't permanently fixed these. So I have a little cedar shim and that's the trick in the transition. I use these cedar shims uh, in certain areas. And this will get epoxied in here. And uh, um, so that makes the flow very, very natural. This is a shallow draft fishing boat that requires low power. And the reason it needs less power, one, it's very light. So the construction's quite strong. Um, and yet it has a nice tunnel hull. So really once up on plane, and it has these trim tabs that double as a boarding area. Um, but once up on plane, you only have these two back surfaces, uh, basically like a catamaran. Uh, so ideally that keeps the motor up. I've still not tested. I've kept it an extra inch high than, than what you're supposed to because I want ultra so shallow draft. But if it cavitates, I'll just nip this out and drop the motor a little bit maybe an inch at a time or something and see where I get the ideal middle ground. The center console is roughed in. Low power, save you some money. I have a 9.9 uh, .9 Mariner four stroke for it. I got lucky to find it on, um, on one of these buy and sell uh, sites and it looks like a really good motor. So I'm excited to test it. Uh, the interior is glassed up to here, but sealed with epoxy and, and filled um, uh, up the sides. I've used exterior grade um, roofing ply and I selected my sheets and was lucky and got them before prices went stupid. Um, so that uh, made the build a little more affordable by testing a design concept on it and I think it's gone really well. Uh, if you saw the tr transition from, um, from the V entry to the tunnel went really smooth. It's, it's going to be sweet. Runners on the bottom so that are they they come off on the side here underneath so they're partially structural because that helps stiffen these wide framed uh, uh, wide frame body and there's still the side cleats to go in for bench seating and the in wall to go in so that'll all stiffen it up um, yeah okay so um, there'll be flotation and a storage and a back uh, motor well. I'm just now toying with where I'm going to put the bench seating. I had thought I'd put it right up with the um, driver's seat, right straight across there. But actually, I like that detail of the scallop, and I think I'm going to set it back. That way, people's hips have this area to, for room, but I also want that I can do my cables. So there'll be a, a secondary back secondary backrest here. Um, so that my steering cables can come past. Um, I with the motor, I only have the controls on the motor, and uh, but I still will just have a clip-on steering um, because I can reach back and and grab the tiller to do adjustments. So when you know you're in open water, you just go buzz along and steer as you would with a console. Um, yeah, transom will be kept uh, varnished. It's dusty. That's, uh, you know, that'll all come off. Um, let's see, what else, what else? Uh, some of the unique construction, the upright frames are fairly light, three quarter inch. This is uh, spruce, uh, basically it came from two by sixes. Uh, the reason I kept it light is so I could round the corners. So there's no angles to deal with. With the rounded corners, you, you can just bend anything around it and then fill it the inside and you get a good fillet. So it's not wood on wood so much as it is 
the fillet getting into the gap and uh, that makes for a very strong joint. Number one, I use wood flour, which is actually structural. Um, other fillers might seem tempting. Uh, the mi micro wood fibers crisscross and cause, uh, cause it to link up when it hardens. And this makes it ridiculously strong. I'd highly recommend you stick to the wood flour. It might be a bit rougher. I filter my own from my sanders. Um, so that's one of the details and, and gussets to um, join the uprights to the, uh, the cross frames. And the whole thing is egg crated together. If you keep the boat level, uh, then construction's pretty easy. You just uh, work from the level and plumb and it comes together. So the boat has a trap door. I happen to have old flooring left over from my Deanne's Rose design. So, and, and I was short. So instead of, um, instead of going full width and only having one left, I put these two as less size as a pattern. But since you walk down the middle, I think that looked okay. And um, this will get painted out with sort of a, sort of a, a battleship gray. I don't really like white for the interior. There's too much glare personally, and uh, dirt shows up a lot. So there's a, a big hatch here for three storage areas. And this is just a wear pad, basically. So it just adds strength in this middle area where everybody obviously will be walking. So what I like, I'll just uh, reflect here on the step through again. This is so that I've been fishing with my buddies and you always have to haul your leg over, especially if you're camping on shore, haul your leg over the, over the back or over the uh, sides. So I thought I like my pram bows and th the result of the reason for the pram bows is I build with two center frames makes for a ridiculously strong hull. And it means I need no forms because these egg crate in together you fill it the, the seams, get it all level and square, and then there you go. There's all your framing set up, and it was upside down, as, as you'll see. I wanted a nice, easy entry and exit, and I thought for older folks wanting to go fishing, that would be very good. I was thinking of putting a small step here, but I'm probably going to leave it. It's pretty comfortable. And so coming, so in these two areas... There will be duck boards that will be removable, but basically I have some cedar boards that I'll plane down. They're from an old cedar deck. I do a lot of reclaimed lumber because um, I can't afford to buy new nowadays. It's crazy. So you might want to do the same, but I think the cedar, even though it has nail holes, I'll actually ding it up on purpose and make it look really nice. That's just a scrap piece of cloth that fell here. Um, yeah, so it'll look really nice and give you a platform. There'll be another platform in here coming over and capping the ends here so that I can run my steering cables, which just will be that really strong rope that's almost like steel. And it they'll come out under, under here. There's a little hole, come out, go to the back side, head to the back, and across across the top. And hence, that's why I'll need the, uh, the secondary back backrest there. Uh, you'll be able to lean still on the very back, I think. This is the new plan since yesterday, because I think I design as I go. Um, so if I keep that just enough for cables to run behind and, and the pulleys, then then you can sit your butt and then lean your back up against the, the nice back and be right to the back, have the widest possible space, and that should be quite comfortable and the motor will be out of your way. Yes, by your ear, but that's otherwise you go sit up here. But if you have a load of people, then two can sit back at the back corners. There will be a hatch here. I do have a water. I want this watertight as a watertight bulkhead. I've got this old mahogany door I think would look cool, tip up and give better access. Battery storage can sit under here or under on either side. I think probably I'll put it to the opposite side of where the gas is. I just have this old seat. See how well it cleans up. It's actually extremely comfortable. I have another more uh, cushion seat 
It's a little dirtier though, so I don't know if I can get it clean, but that would be nice. So sitting, it's impressive. Feels really good. So if I just keep this below, I've got some chunks of mahogany. This will be mahogany and I'll, I'll make my own drum and rope with cable coming and going straight under. Uh, that um, the duck boards will, will keep your feet out of the way, but yes, the cable will go down. But you still should be able to put your feet up here if you want to just lay, sit back and, and be cruising along nice and slow. So, um, so I'm talking about Wilbies, and I normally would just like to show you, but I will carry on here for a minute. The in wall, I'll leave the gap between open, and for instance, at the back here, I'll probably tilt, I'll be adding little blocks basically uh, for strength and spacers. But the back, I'll put the blocks much closer together, uh, say for four fishing rods, say, uh, or at least three fishing rods that you can stick them in and they're tilted to the back in, in a fishing position. I think that'd be kind of cool. And maybe do the same toward the bow, the bow section where they could be tilted out because it has a nice flare. So tilted and tilted, you know, boom, boom. Um, actually the ones in the front just actually need to be straight. So then you can stick your rod in and sit back and, and, and just watch it. Might be nice to have it at hand too. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. And I know a lot of people like to down rig fish. Um, so, so I may, look into what that requires. Uh, I don't downrig fish much other than with my one buddy. So um, yeah, that, uh, that will trim up the inside. I'm going to paint all this out. Like I say, a gray, maybe a darker gray than this, I think. And um, I did some samples up. Uh, I have some white lacquer that I'm hoping to use. So I'm just doing a boil test on it. Um, so here, the seat, our cushions, they still need some cleaning, but they're nice cushions that I had. So I actually designed the seat to work. Oh, it's going to open this way. And in here will be a live well. So that will be relatively watertight as well. I'll have clip downs and I'll trim up the underside here so that it uh, all fits very snug. And there's trim to go around the box here. So that's yet to come. And this cushion, I think I'll just Velcro on as removable because if you want to go sunbathe, perhaps you might want to do this, you know, and then you can lay, lay yourself down and sunbathe, put another cushion up here uh, just for your head, uh, throw your life jacket, whatever, and you can go take a nap. This would be a cool camper, I think, too. I, I'm... I want more time with it. It's a cool design, so I just want to... Um, hmm, I have ideas. Uh, too many ideas. My idea is actually with all those slot uh, openings uh, on the sides that I could make two cabin halves that just slip on, very light, simple, with a center walkthrough, canvas covered, so that it would turn this whole area forward of the, of the console into into a, a, a dry shelter and how hard would it be to put um, since I anyways have have the the um, duck boards and um, a rail here to say lift the duck board one duck board on one side and end up with a nice um, sleeping bunk uh, with a blow up mattress or something like the, you'd have one heck of a lot of space and still get to sit on one side so two people could sleep here quite nicely. So another, uh, this is the storage unit here. And uh, there's three chambers. All this decking has to come out yet. I've got the framing done in there to support everything. And this is just a chunk of, um, it's actually was a really nice piece of plywood. You can see not a knot on it. Um, ideally, I'd like five eighths and three quarters so that weather stripping can work or half inch and three quarters and then thicker weather stripping. So that's 90% um, watertight, but not a hundred percent because it, it does drain all those three chambers drain in the front. There will be three flotation chambers. I'm just going to fill it with uh, blocks of foam that I have to dissipate the air airspace and seal it all. Well, it's all epoxied. 
So, yeah, so there's a whole huge, how wide, how long is this? I should know, I think it's like 50 something inches, 51 inches um, for, for a, a deck area to stand and fish. How wide are we? We're, you know, in the widest spot, we're almost, we're easily four feet. But the skinniest spot is still still 24 inches, so this uh, this will make a very comfortable wide spot. And I envision, I think I'll have like a chain drop drop um, something, uh, a cable or chain, so that uh, that drops and is very solid. So you, in theory, could come out right out on the bow here and stand and cast, and just you know lean your legs up against these newel posts. Uh, which are, are, you know, kind of customized a bit. You can get as fancy as you want or not. But lean a little on these newel posts, and you shouldn't really fall in terribly, unless you're clumsy. But cast away and feel like you're standing right on the water. I think that's going to be a super, super cool feature of the boat. So, yeah. Um... She's going to be a pretty boat. And I'll take you down the front. Coming up and down is so nice in this thing. Uh, I didn't put my clip, but I just want to show you coming down the front, the V entry. So this will all be weather stripped. There'll be weather strip in that gap. That's stain those are stainless hinges. But there's V entry. Well clad quarter inch aluminum strips on, on the runners. And underneath it transitions into the tunnel. You can see it starting will uh, handle rough water nicely. And with weather strip there, and I've allowed for a gap groove right there, that uh, weather strip will seal that up as well. I think it's worth soaking it in.